Hi, I'm Annie Palermo. I'm a physical therapist at the University of Miami, and I've been working on my PhD in the Department of Physical Therapy and at the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis. For the last four years, I've been studying the impact that breathing has on people after they've had a spinal cord injury. Because of this, I wanted to make a video explaining why COVID-19 is dangerous for people that have had a spinal cord injury and ways that you can better prepare yourself. First, let's talk a little bit about breathing. The diaphragm is our biggest breathing muscle and it sits right at the base of our rib cage. We also use other muscles called accessory muscles that help us to breathe in and out. Unfortunately, a spinal cord injury can change how all of these muscles work and it can make breathing difficult. The coronavirus that causes COVID-19 tends to make itself at home in lung tissues and can cause pneumonia. So yes, people who have had a spinal cord injury are at risk to develop severe symptoms if they catch COVID-19. But there's something you can do about it. Just like you would train weak muscles in your arms or maybe in your legs, if you have access to them, you can train your weak breathing muscles. If you still have your incentive spirometer from acute rehab, take it out and take deep breaths in through the mouthpiece. If that feels easy, try one of these resistance trainers. On this page, I have pictured the ultra breathe, the threshold, and the power breathe. These trainers, along with others, have spring-loaded resistance. So as you get stronger, you can increase the resistance you have to breathe against. However, if you don't have access to those resistance trainers or an incentive spirometer, you can use a straw. A straw provides a little bit of resistance on the way in and on the way out, like this. Start with 10 breaths through the straw. If that seems easy, you can breathe in and out through the straw for two minutes. Try to work your way up to 10 minutes at a time. Your goal overall should be about 30 minutes a day. Take a look at this scale down here. This can help you to rate how difficult your breathing is. If it gets above a six, you're working too hard. So try to stay in that four to six range. If you're below a four, it's not really hard enough and your muscles won't really adapt. For safety, don't train if you've recently had a full or partially collapsed lung or if you have a history of breathing problems, please consult your physician. And start the exercises slowly if you experience shortness of breath or lightheadedness. You also should not train if you already have a fever. A fever is a sign that your body is working very hard to fight off the infection, and you don't want to challenge it more by making it difficult to breathe. Lastly, don't share your straw and be sure to wash it if you use it more than once. We want you to help us spread the word about respiratory muscle training. Anyone can benefit from respiratory muscle training, even if you don't have a spinal cord injury. So grab a straw and record your first 10 breaths. Be sure to post it on social media and tag us and use the hashtag C10Breathe10Challenge. Thanks for watching. Stay safe at home and keep breathing.